AI has the capability to amplify our humanity if we start to use it in the right way. You're essentially programming using natural language. One of my friends is like, you really are like the AI whisperer. And I'm like, because I've been trained on how to ask questions. It took six iterations to get here. What should I have asked you to begin with instead of what I asked you? My mind is honestly pretty blown. They created the AI, but now you are coming with your own context, your own use cases, and creating essentially almost like a custom AI for yeah, yourself. That's exactly what it is. In this video, we'll explore MEM's powerful AI capabilities with some real life case studies. If you missed the previous video, check out part one for a more basic walkthrough of MEM's note taking features. We'll dive into three use cases on how AI can help you improve your creativity, productivity, and workflows. I then chat with Srini about how to get the best results out of working with the AI. Don't miss it, it comes right after the case studies. And stay till the end to find out how you can migrate your second brain to MEM seamlessly and free of charge. So this is like a really advanced ways to use this, but keep in mind, all of this is done using nothing but a bunch of your notes. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build a daily task planner for you. Okay, we've covered a lot of this, but let's build Tiago's daily task planner. Tell me what mems we need to create first. So this task planner, is it going to be a note itself, a mem itself? Each one of these will be mems. Let's do this. Um, Give me three goals. One is to write a book proposal for my third book. Second, do the landscaping in the backyard. And third, plan our trip to Mexico. Go ahead and create a goals mem from this. Titled Tiago's goals and we'll write all of them as smart goals. So that's the first mem we're gonna create. Amazing. Okay, so this is the first step. So now we're gonna go ahead and take that. So you're creating a new mem. Yep, Tiago's goals. Okay, so now, based on the goals, we need criteria. You know, what are the criteria for when it will generate the tasks, so. Okay, come up with the task criteria mem, and while you're at it, use building a second brain, deep work, and anything from Steven Kotler for the criteria. And so we're gonna add one more. Let's add more criteria it needs to be completely objective. You either completed the task or didn't. Number, verb, output, measurable, tangible, actionable, and revise the criteria. So the criteria are what it's gonna use when it generates your task list for the day, which we'll get to that, all right? These are actually, I never really thought about it this explicitly, but these are some of the criteria that I have in mind. That's why I built this for myself. Okay, now we've got your task criteria. Okay, now we've done the criteria and the goals. Write up task model mem and then we can build the daily planning template. You can think of it as sort of instructions. Um, so let, remember what I was telling you in ChatGPT that we have like an objective, a process, and an output. In fact, let's just apply that. Can you revise this so it's structured as the following objective, process, and output? You can figure out the objective. I just love that your instructions, they don't have to be formal. They don't have to be precise. They have to be clear. So, okay, so now we've got the model built. We've got three different mems all, you know, built already. Mm -hmm. So now we have to do one last thing. Okay, build out Tiago's daily planning template, but adapt his second brain weekly review format to the daily planning template, and make sure you add the instructions for yourself, so you understand what he's talking about when we say, initiate Tiago's daily planning template, and integrate Tiago's goals, Tiago's task criteria and task model into it. I'll add the bi-directional links to those mems. So now what it's going to do is going to build out a planning template that you can use every day. You run it at the end of the day and it basically will ask you, what did you finish You know, today? This is so great. I do review the calendar. I do clear my desktop. Well, that's all based <laughs> on your uh, book. I think we keep seeing the power of it having all that context. Yeah. ChatGPT is intelligent, but it just it doesn't, doesn't know. Context. It doesn't know about you. Okay. Do one thing here. You need to add instructions for yourself so that when we initiate the prompt, you know, to turn this into an interactive experience, you need to ask Tiago about all this. So let's reformat this so it's interactive and question based. So 
It's funny because it's like, basically it's programming its own responses. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take what we've just built here. And we are going to do this and we're going to tell it to. In the process of running this reference, Tiago's task model mem, Tiago's task criteria and Tiago's goals. All task suggestions for the next day should be based on Tiago's goals. I put in the bi-directional links as a safeguard. So now you're running the program that you've created. Yep. And we can go back and revise it to say, like, let's do, you know, one mess. See, let's start with the first one. Since we're just in a demo, we can skip most of this, but generate Tiago's task list for tomorrow 10 tasks based on Tiago's goals. A numbered list is fine. So it would take me through a kind of a question and answer process. Yep. So Back now what you'll see is here's your task list for tomorrow. So one of the, you see, you spend two hours writing a section of the book proposal. Like, you know, it's researching content through potential landscaping companies for quotes. So I kind of want to step back and highlight for people what is happening here, which I think is pretty mind blowing. You're not just making a better task manager, you know, with ni more nicely rounded corners and faster checking of boxes and whatever. Mm -hmm. You're really like disrupting the concept of a task manager. It's not about going in there and meticulously writing each thing. It's about a conversation. This is to me software. It's just not software that some software engineer in Silicon Valley had to sit down and create. They created the AI, but now you are coming with your own context, your own use cases, and creating essentially almost like a custom AI for yeah, yourself. That's exactly what it is. This frees us up to do the really cool things. My nephew is one and he has a pretty extensive list of words. On a whim, I decided that I would write this life advice book for him that was only ever meant to be read by him and nobody else. Like the most personalized thing I could do, but it was meant to be given to him when he's 18. On a whim one day, I asked the, the mem chat, I was like, hey, do you know who Arn is? And it was like, Arn is your nephew. And I'm like, okay. What if we wrote a book about child development, like you and I, and AI together? I'll feed you stories about things that Aaron has done. You'll add the psychology of child development behind it. So it's just a personal project called Understanding Aaron. And it's a story of an uncle's love for his nephew, a creator's curiosity about the world, and AI's ability to make sense of it. And it wrote this for you. Yeah. The goal here was to see how much I could actually use it, primarily AI capabilities, very little of my own input. I was like, you know what? Can you write up four synopsis for a children's book based on Aaron's word listening? And came up with it like four or five. And I was like, okay, well, that, that's interesting. I said, like, let's, let's dig deeper into the one on curiosity. And then what's interesting is this takes us to a lot of your own concepts. So I just finished reading this book called Simply Put, because uh, he had written about Dr. Seuss in that book. One of the things that occurred to me was like, I was like, well, Dr. Seuss has like a nice ring to it. Let's do this. Let's take the combination of Arn's word list and write this book about curiosity in the style of a Dr. Seuss book. What it came up with was what we call the curious adventure of art. Memchat even gave me the il il illustration instruction. And this was the result, a highly personalized book with words that he knows, objects that he knows. What product or platform did you use to generate these? A chat GPT. Okay. So, cause the, the, new, the new image generation. The new GPT-4 integrate. So I literally, I, like first I tried to give it Mem's instructions and I was like, you know what? I just dumped the plot in. Hmm. And the funny thing is, as long as you tell it, like, I need you to pair this with images. So he came up with the first image. I was like, I don't like this. I was like, let's do this. I was like, there's this book called Look, Look. Can we do it in the style of those books? And so I knew he would recognize that style. Lately, he's obsessed with bananas for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can't get him to stop talking about bananas. <laughs> it was really cool because he recognized all these different things. This is the persuasion amplifier template. <laughs> Okay. So what I had the AI do oh, beautiful. was combine all the ideas from Made to Stick as well as Jonah Berger's um, book, Contagious, and then my friend Michael um, Shine, who wrote a book called The Hype Handbook, and then Sally Hogshead's stuff on fascination. Use persuasion amplifier template and write a mini sales page for maximize your output. For people who might be watching my interview with Tiago Forte. There's so much going on here. Yeah. It's applying ideas that you've collected from books that you read. But I distilled those notes into that template because what I found was initially I would do things like say, apply the ideas from made to stick uh -huh. and revise this. Cause I was like, I wanted to create a headline generator uh -huh. or a title generator. Uh -huh. And then I was like, okay, then apply the ideas from Contagious. Then 
out of morbid curiosity, I asked Mems AI, I was like, wouldn't it be possible just to combine all of these together into one mega template called the Persuasion Amplifier? And so it came up with that. So we've used this, you know, pretty repeatedly. There was an email about, we wrote just, you know, randomly. It was the very last email that I had sent for our previous course, course launch. Uh, the idea was to become the Tony Stark of your digital life, because that's what this really makes you in a lot of ways. It is the closest thing to like a personal Jarvis. I think the term generative AI is actually inaccurate. It's generative, iterative, unconversational AI. Ray Dalio wrote about this idea of um, first, second, and third order consequences when you make a decision, right? Let's say you decide that, hey, I'm gonna move somewhere like I'm gonna to move to another city. The first order consequence is that you now have to get an apartment. But then of course there are a whole lot of other things that happen as a result of that. Those are second and third order consequences. And often the third and the second and third order consequences are actually much more important when we make decisions. The first order output is the first response that AI gives you. That's almost always the worst one. The thing is most people get frustrated and- They stop there. They stop there. So this is what I call the better Google paradigm, right? It is a better Google in one way. It's like, instead of having to search through five links, you can get the exact answer to the question that you're looking for. It's much more than that. It's so much more than that. <laughs> Metaphor I always come back to over and over, and I even use these exact words in our conversation was it's like you, have a Ferrari and the place you choose to drive it most is in a school zone where it go, you can only go 25 miles an hour. You have to realize that this is actually not just a tool, but a potential partner. And instead of looking at it as something that can make you more efficient at completing tasks, it's something that you can use and assign roles. You can think through ideas with it. You can engage in dialogue with it because remember, it gave you one output. You know, and I think part of the reason I think this way is because I'm an interviewer for a living. So like, I don't plan questions when I interview somebody. I ask questions based on the answers that they give me. And so I think that's just naturally the way my brain works. And you layer on top of that all thousands of notes and thousands of interviews connected. Like, so my brain is a network of other people's ideas. When you're stuck in the better Google paradigm, AI is a tool for efficiency and execution. But when you basically get to what I am calling now the new era of creation paradigm, it's a tool for exploration. It's a tool for critical thinking. It's a tool for convergent and divergent thinking. I make this look easy because I experimented with this and I iterated. But the thing is, I also don't stop when I don't get what I want. If it takes me five to six attempts to get something, right when I get to the final thing, I'll say, okay, it took six iterations to get here. What should I have asked you to begin with instead of what I asked you? And then I'll just catalog that for future reference. So I keep a library of, of prompts that I know have worked. Like one of my friends is like, you really are like the AI whisperer. And I'm like, well, I'll tell you why, because I've been trained on how to ask questions. Like that's mm. like my background is in asking questions and synthesizing knowledge. This is why writing actually is such an important skill. Uh -huh. Like ironically of all the things you need to be able to do well, is you need to be able to write. Cause like when I see friends who use AI and they get really frustrated and I'm like, you sound like an idiot, that's why. <laughs> This is like basic delegation at work, right? If you think about when we complete, when we assign a task to somebody, if you do a lousy job mm -hmm. explaining that task and they do a lousy job completing it, whose fault is it? Yeah. Not theirs, yours. <laughs> the argument that people make that AI is dehumanizing us is short-sighted. Mm -hmm. Because funny enough, to think about something on this level is one of the most human things we can do. AI has the capability to amplify our humanity yeah. if we start to use it in the right way. So when you see AI through what we call the better Google paradigm, which we've kind of talked about, mm -hmm. you basically tend to overestimate or underestimate its capabilities mm -hmm. and overestimate its limitations. But the thing is when you eliminate that paradigm altogether, you start to realize that your thinking and your interaction is largely what drives what comes out of it because all AI depends on human input. Mm -hmm. It may have access to all this information, mm -hmm. but it takes a human being to think about something like this. Yeah, yeah there are other parts of AI that can be dehumanizing. Yeah, if you choose to not embrace the fact that you have very unique things that an AI cannot do. Yeah. An AI doesn't have the emotion or the empathy to think, hey, this is something that I wanna create. Like that's a very human instinct. Right. And the thing is that we can take our most human instincts to do things that are kind, creative, empathetic, um, generous. And when we can combine those instincts with AI, AI has the potential to amplify our humanity in a way we've never seen before and really honestly advance the entire evolution of humanity.
So if people want to find out more about yeah. this or about you or your other work. So, okay, so unmistakablecreative.com is the podcast. Um, you, know, you can find that wherever you listen to podcasts. So we have a ultimate guide to building a second brain in MEM. Go to maximizeyouroutput.com slash custom. They basically will get a personalized plan on how to move their second brain to MEM. Mm -hmm. They just have to fill out an Airtable form. The more detail you give us, the better. Basically what happens is you'll receive an email with a customized second brain, plan, you know, migrate your second brain to MEM plan based on the input that you provide us um, into an email. And it'll list out every zap that you need to build, all the automations, and it'll make additional suggestions as well. Like, but the way the new course is designed is that every module in each module, all of which are in MEM, all the exercises in each module, you'll be creating notes that you use in the subsequent ones. Nice. So that way, when you start to see this bi-directional linking occur, it's you're literally viscerally experiencing everything we're talking about. The idea is that what we're gonna do is I'm gonna enable you to create at the speed of thought. We could generate articles in seconds yeah. using nothing but existing notes, all written in your own words. Srini, thank you so much. This has been, this has been such an amazing experience. I learned so much about not just MEM, but about creativity and thinking and artificial intelligence. Thank you for, for being on the channel. Well, thanks for having me. This has been super fun. Ready? <clears throat> hey, everyone. <clears throat>